Good morning, American FBI's most wanted. The hunt for that Facebook killer goes nationwide. A $50,000 reward now being offered, tips pouring in, and now Facebook is under fire. The company apologizes for leaving it online for hours. What they're doing to stop it from happening again. North Korea now warns they're prepared for weekly missile tests as the rogue nation blames the U.S. for taking them to the brink of nuclear war. President Trump fires back. Any message from North Korea? Got to behave. As tensions spike, Hawaii is now preparing for an emergency. Also this morning, new questions about Ivanka Trump's brand amid reports it's reaching record sales and received a big windfall from China the same day she sat down with the Chinese president at Mar-a-Lago. And the pop princess and the prince, Lady Gaga, one-on-one -on -one with Prince William. People that you think would never have a problem uh, do. Opening up about her struggle with mental illness and how she's overcoming it, saying it's time to stop hiding as part of the Royals' passion project with Kate and Prince Harry. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. And good morning, America. Boy, that is powerful exchange between Lady Gaga and mm -hmm. Prince William. They just released it early this morning. We'll have more on that ahead. But we're going to begin with that nationwide manhunt for the suspect who posted that crime on Facebook. This morning, there are new 911 calls from the scene. And we are learning more about the killer who's still on the loose. ABC's Alex Perez is in Cleveland, has the latest details for us. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Robin. The FBI and local investigators uh, say uh, they have been talking to the police about this situation, trying to figure out what exactly, uh, how they can piece this together, this case together here. Now, we've also learned that uh, investigators are talking to uh, anybody on the scene and anybody who may have any information on this case to try to figure out what exactly went wrong. For the first time here, we are hearing some of these 911 tapes, hearing some of the confusion and panic that followed in the moments after the shooting. Found somebody about to kill. This morning, Steve Stevens is on the FBI's most wanted list. The hunt intensifying and now going nationwide. Our reach uh, now is um, basically all over this country. This, as new 911 tapes are released of the moment a neighbor witnessed the shooting aftermath of the unarmed elderly man. Where was he shot at? He's been shot in the head. Is he awake at all? No, I don't think he's on cops. He's dead. Authorities say Stevens' cell phone signal pinged Sunday afternoon, about 100 miles east of Cleveland, near Erie, Pennsylvania. Police say they made contact with him by phone late Sunday, trying to persuade him to turn himself in, but now his trail has gone cold. Uh, this individual is armed and dangerous, and quite frankly, at this point, he could be a lot of places. Stevens recorded this shocking video of himself randomly targeting 74-year-old Robert Godwin, killing him in cold blood, then posting it to Facebook Sunday afternoon. Past years been really f***ed up for me. This morning, we're learning more about the 37-year-old suspect, a case manager who worked with troubled youth. I deal with people's problems every day, but when it comes to my shit, nobody gives a f in his Facebook rants, complaining about the downward spiral of his life after gambling and girlfriend trouble. Earlier videos posted to his YouTube page, a stark contrast, showing the Cleveland native bowling, fishing, and even celebrating yeah, we did it, baby. his city's one, basketball one, win last year. A former college friend of the alleged killer, stunned. It was an act of cowardice. Stand up, be a man, turn yourself in. Overnight, to family and friends gathering to remember the innocent victim who leaves behind 10 children and 14 grandchildren. I saw the video and it forever would be in my mind um, because I saw the fear in my father's eyes. He was so afraid. He was. He was so afraid. So sweet. And authorities say they are following up on, quote, dozens and dozens of leads. There's now a $50,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest. Robin? Alex, thank you. Joining us now is our chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, and our contributor, former Dallas police chief, David Brown. Chief Brown, let me start with you. Where does the search stand right now? It's a national search has been reported, and we are combing all of the technology uh, that he might use beyond cell phones, just social media, 
might be uh, leads that might develop as well as family and friends because it's highly suggestive that he's getting help in order to be able to disappear off the radar like this. Because yesterday we were saying there were five, day, five states that were on high alert. Now they're just saying it's a nationwide surge. As more time passes, it gets, becomes a little more complicated? More complicated and more difficult for law enforcement to be able to locate. They need help from the public, and they've made those pleas uh, to the public to report anything they see that might be suspicious, that might uh, be a tip that leads them to capture this suspect. You're familiar with, with, with searching for suspects. So, so what, what's next in the manhunt, do you think? In most of our roadways, there are cameras, uh, either with tollways, and there are cameras in public spaces like malls and, and locations where people frequent. And so we're combing all of those types of technologies in order to ho hopefully get that one little tip mm. of a license plate or just a suspicious thing that happened that people report and follow up on that. But it's, again, it's a needle in the haystack yeah. type of search. And so we need the public's help, and we need to emphasize that it's a crime yeah. to hinder apprehension. It's a crime to, to secrete him. Yeah, because there's a the thought that he must be getting some help here. Yes. Rebecca, going back uh, to Facebook, uh, what are they saying this morning about this? Well, what's so interesting, Robin, is that as Chief Brown points out, technology can help mm. us find this individual, but it also helped this individual put his story public. And overnight, Facebook has now apologized for this video being up on its site for as long as it did. They said, as a result of this terrible series of events, we are reviewing our reporting flows to be sure people can report videos and other material that violates our standards as easily and quickly as possible. We know we need to do better. And do better is part of the thing because people are the users of Facebook mm -hmm. right now are the people who help Facebook take down this material. In order to take down material like this, as of today, Facebook needs people to go on their site and say, this this exists. Yeah, there's nothing legally wrong with what Facebook did, but people are thinking morally, is there something more they could do? And, and they want to do more. They are developing technology to try to do more. If you look at that timeline, between the time yeah, that this individual posted his first video until they took it down, that was more than two hours. All right. Well, see you. Thanks so much. Thank you, George. Okay, thanks, guys. We are following lots of other important stories this morning. President Trump heading to Wisconsin, where he's going to sign a new executive order aimed at encouraging U.S. companies to hire American workers and buy American goods. His own company needs to face questions on that score. The president also making calls and sending tweets in a bid to stop the Democrat running in a special congressional election in Georgia that has been a Republican seat. The vote's happening today. Meanwhile, overseas tensions are reaching a boiling point with North Korea. That regime promising weekly missile tests now as Vice President Pence continues his tour of the region. So let's go right to ABC's Matt Gutman, who's in Seoul, South Korea, for all the latest. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, Robin. We've been hearing more saber rattling with North Korea vowing those additional missile tests, but everybody in the region here still on tenterhooks awaiting that much anticipated North Korean nuclear test. That as Vice President Mike Pence in the region this morning saying all options are on the table, including economic and diplomatic pressure. Overnight, Vice President Mike Pence in Japan reassuring U.S. allies in Asia and warning North Korea that all options are still on the table. We will not rest and we will not relent until we achieve the objective of a denuclearized Korean peninsula. With tensions between the U.S. and North Korea reaching a new boiling point, President Trump offering three simple words to the country on Monday. North Korea on the defense. Its deputy U.N. ambassador blaming the U.S. for putting the Korean Peninsula on the brink of nuclear warfare, essentially warning the hermit state would fight to the death. The summer nuclear war may break out at any moment on the peninsula. And the country's vice foreign minister defiantly batting a message back to President Trump in an interview with the BBC saying that if anything, the country will only increase its missile tests. Our nuclear weapons protect us from that threat. We'll be conducting more missile tests on a weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. That as new details emerge on that failed missile test on Saturday. U.S. officials say it was a medium or possibly short-range missile that blew up seconds after launch. It flew only about 34 miles before spinning out of control into the Sea of Japan.
While the range of this type of missile is unclear, North Korea is developing a missile that could travel over 2,000 miles within range of Guam. And even longer range missiles, one of them could be capable of traveling over 7,000 miles, able to hit the U.S. mainland. Despite North Korea's latest provocations, the White House saying the president likely won't be drawing red lines in the sand. Trump telling Fox News he's not sharing his strategies. I don't want to telegraph what I'm doing or what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm not like other administrations where they say we're going to do this in four weeks and that doesn't work that way. Short of war, some of the things that are being talked about are limiting the already crippled exports of North Korea and grounding its national airline. But all that tension already rippling across the Pacific and Hawaii. Lawmakers are dusting off emergency plans. They would have only 20 minutes to prepare in case of a possible attack there. George. A lot of tension right now. Matt Gutman, thanks very much. Back here in the U.S., President Trump preparing to sign new executive orders this afternoon that, that put his spotlight on American manufacturing as a new report reveals that his daughter Ivanka was awarded lucrative trademarks from China on the same day she sat down with China's president at Mar-a-Lago. Our senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega has all the latest. Good morning, Cecilia. Hey, George, good morning to you. The Associated Press is reporting that the famous first daughter's business is booming. Sales, they say, have hit record levels. Imports are up, and at least some of that success has come during some key moments uh, during her short time here at the White House. Now, the day that Ivanka Trump's company won provisional approval, uh, as you said, from the Chinese government for three new trademarks, uh, that would give that company monopoly rights to sell things like jewelry and bags there. Uh, that night, she and her husband, Jared Kushner, dined with China. China's president at Mar-a-Lago. Ethics experts are already weighing in. They say that this could pose serious uh, conflict of interest uh, concerns. Ivanka Trump personally has tried to distance herself from her company. She stepped down as CEO. She uh, has said that she would recuse herself from conflicts of interest. We tried to ask Ivanka Trump, the White House, her team about this report. They have not responded to us yet, but her attorney, take a look at this, did tell the Associated Press, quote, she has retained, retained authority to direct the trustees to terminate agreements that she determines create a conflict of interest or the appearance of one. But some big questions about that yeah. out here this morning, Yeah, George. can she judge her own conflict? That's the question right there. Meantime, these executive orders from the president designed to encourage hiring of American workers and buying of American products, but they're somewhat limited in scope. Yeah, exactly. The White House says that this new order will make it tougher for tech companies uh, to replace Americans with foreign workers. We're talking about these highly skilled uh, workers on these H-1B visas. During the campaign, then, candidate Trump had called for a moratorium on these visas. This this doesn't go uh, that far, George, and it also doesn't seem to impact the seasonal workers at the Mar-a-Lago Hotel. Right. He okay. brings those in down at Mar-a-Lago. Okay, let's bring in our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, for more on this. All kinds of questions, John, about the merging of the president's businesses, family businesses with government action. You just saw Cecilia's report right there. It's also being raised in the whole debate over tax reform right now. You talked to the White House yesterday about that. Democrats saying that they're going to have to see how any tax reform is going to affect Trump's bottom line. Yeah, Democrats, and keep in mind, he needs Democrats to pass tax reform. This needs to be a bipartisan approach if it's going to have any chance of passing uh, in, in Congress. And George, what Democrats are saying is they want to see Donald Trump's tax reform returns before they agree to anything on tax reform because they want to know how the tax changes would affect Trump and the Trump organization. Meantime, when you were you were in the White House uh, briefing room yesterday with Sean Spicer, he made it about as clear as they have in the past, although he was a little bit circumspect, that the president's just not going to release these tax returns. Yeah, this was something else. I, I asked him uh, point blank, can we now just acknowledge that the president is never, ever going to release his tax returns? And Sean, uh, instead of kind of pushing back on that, says, I'll just get, have to get back to you on this. They're no longer saying that he will certainly release them if whatever audit he may or may not be under uh, is complete. They're saying, look, maybe he just won't ever release those tax returns. Meantime, the president really weighing in on the special congressional election down in Georgia today. He gave, did this robocall overnight. Let's listen. Hello, this is President Donald Trump. Liberal Democrats from outside of Georgia are spending millions and millions of dollars trying to take your Republican congressional seat away from you. Don't let them do it. And John, he's up and tweeting early this morning. 
Yeah, this is a fascinating race. He is saying that if we simply get to a runoff, if the Democrat gets less than 50%, uh, this will be a victory. Uh, but, but George, this is a fascinating district because it has been Republican for years. This was Newt Gingrich's district, but Donald Trump only won that district by one percentage point last year. Okay, we will be watching today. John Carl, thanks very much. All right, George, now to the huge legal battle over the death penalty in Arkansas, the state planning to execute eight men on death roll in 11 days. But overnight, the Supreme Court intervened. The state forced to abandon its plan just minutes before one of the inmates death warrant was set to expire. ABC's Mary Bruce is at the Supreme Court with those details for us. Good morning, Mary. Yeah, we're having some audio problems with Mary right there. Mm -hmm. So let's move on now to the search for two hikers who are swept away in a creek at Grand Canyon National Park. They're from the family who founded the Merrill Hiking Boot Company, and ABC's Kena Whitworth is in Los Angeles with the details. Good morning, Kena. And George, good morning. The two have been missing now more than 48 hours. They were in their second day of a multi-day backpacking trip. Family members telling us they are experienced and they have the skills to survive the rugged terrain. This morning, investigators desperately searching to locate two missing hikers who were swept away in the rushing waters of the Grand Canyon this weekend. 14-year-old Jackson Standeffer and his step-grandmother, 62-year-old Luann Merrill, were hiking with a group, including Jackson's mother, in a remote area of Arizona on Saturday. The National Park Service says the group was crossing this creek with fast-moving water when the two fell in and were swept away. This particular kind of incident is extremely rare uh, that that two people would be washed away in a creek crossing is something that is almost unheard of in in our local memory of Grand Canyon incidents. In 1981, Randy Merrill had an idea to create a hiking boot. With Luann is married to the co-founder of popular hiking boot company Merrill and is said to be an experienced hiker who knows the area well. Jackson's uncle writing on Facebook that where the hikers were is hot during the day and freezing at night and the water they were in was probably below 40 degrees. They were well provisioned for a multi-day trip the both were reported to have food and water in their backpacks. We believe they're equipped and have the knowledge to to survive. Now, the boy's uncle telling the AP this morning that searchers have found their backpacks. It's important to note that this happened in such a remote part of the Grand Canyon that search crews are having to stay the night in the wilderness. Some areas can't even be accessed by foot, so they're using boats, helicopters and drones to find the two. Robin. All right, Kena, thank you. Now we have that incredible moment at the Boston Marathon. It was a finish for the ages when a wounded veteran carried his friend across the finish line while she was carrying the American flag. Army Staff Sergeant Earl Granville has run a number of marathons since losing a leg in Afghanistan in 2008. Many are calling the, the moment inspirational and a reminder of how strong those who served in the armed forces are could not agree more mm -hmm. a lot of a powerful moment yeah right there. and there were so many moments like that but that one really stood out mm, sure did let's go over to ginger right now you got some flash floods in texas Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the wildfires in Florida, and then when we're looking at this flash flooding in uh, Brazoria County, Texas, is really where it is. Up to 10 inches of rain has fallen just overnight. The training thunderstorms, this upper level low that's sitting around kind of energizing the atmosphere there, has a flash flood warning just south of Houston. This is going to be in place. The watches and warnings, really the chance for it through the afternoon hours. So something to watch for if you're in East Texas. Also, those wildfires I was mentioning, now 107 wildfires across the state of Florida. The pictures are just intense. This one actually is right along the state line of Georgia, so it's now moving north. All right, let's go ahead and get your local weather in 30 seconds. First, though, the Tuesday trivia brought to you by Las Vegas. I just got a postcard. Oh, yeah? Neat. From you. Oh, uh, work trip canceled. Headed to Vegas for the weekend. Love me. <laughs> That's nice, right? Uh, oh, P.S. Phone dead. Sad face emoji. Sad face emoji. 
And a very good morning, meteorologist Brian Vandergraaff. After these early clouds burn off, a gorgeous day. Look at all this sunshine. Temperatures into the low 70s, above the average of 68. Should be a very nice day ahead. Now get out and enjoy because the next couple of days, ups and downs. Tomorrow we'll have more clouds around. Temperatures knocked back by nearly 10 degrees. Could be a spotty shower or two. Could be an isolated shower or storm on Thursday. But look how we jump back into the 80s and then slip back into the 70s for Friday. Another chance of rain. Best chance of rain out of the next few, I think, comes Sunday. 60s for the weekend. This is the time I wish I could move that East Texas rain right over to Florida and drop it on. People said, what's the dance look like? I don't know what the rain dance looks like, but we're working on it.